IPA for choirs. Dr. Jill Burgett, University of Northern Colorado. Why use IPA? And what is IPA? IPA stands for International Phonetic Alphabet, but more importantly, why should we use it with our choirs? First of all, it builds language confidence. By the mere fact that one sound is associated with each letter. It also creates a culture of knowledgeable singers. All singers have the opportunity to understand how to pronounce languages correctly. It's a, a wonderful tool. It's a wonderful launching point for foreign languages, even though it may not be our mother tongue or a language that we've had training in, we can still learn to speak that language with relative accuracy, learning, IP, learning it with IPA. One huge benefit is that we can start young, just as we start our choirs young on Kerwin and on solfege, note reading, etc., we can start them on IPA. Another important aspect of IPA is that science tells us that language acquisition and music acquisition actually happen in the same part of our brain. So we really add a powerful element when we are working both on language and music acquisition at the same time. Just as there are three approaches to teaching singing, cognitive, affective, and kinesthetic, and of course we need all of them, there are three approaches to teaching IPA as well. In the cognitive domain, we have our pedagogical aspects, tongue positions, charts, symbols, etc. In the kinesthetic domain, we have the imitative approach to languages and teaching IPA through imita imitative means so that the sound is the correct sound is associated with each letter. We also can include modeling, mimetics, and movement that is associated with particular sounds. And the affective domain, just as there is meaning to the text, the textual meaning affects the way that we uh, approach our singing. So there are three approaches to teaching IPA. The benefits of teaching IPA, it's a fabulous tool for singing in foreign language. But in addition to teaching foreign language, it also aids in establishing our singing tone with one sound being associated with each symbol and are having all having an image of what that symbol looks like, we are able to unify the sound. With the vowels, I like to talk about uh, vowel integrity and alignment. IPA gives us the opportunity to do both of those things. I talk like this, and of course I may talk differently than you talk, but when we, but when we sing, we sing like this, with more space in the tone and more open vowel sounds. And of course it gives us an opportunity to experiment with the vowel pyramid and modulating vowels. And I will attach a vowel pyramid to this unit so you can actually take a good look at the vowel pyramid. And that is the vowel pyramid that Weston Noble uses. Another benefit of using IPA when we see those IPA symbols in front of us, it helps us not only to match the vowels, but to arrive and depart from vowels at the same time. Here's an example of a vocalese, and the first example is written out in kind of an, an Englishized version of ooh, oh, ah, a, and e. However, the o, o sound, for example, could mean ooh, could mean uh. Um, the A vowel, A-Y, could mean A, could mean I, depending on the language we are in, depending on um, just how it's said in a word. So to be very clear, we can just replace it with the IPA symbols. You'll notice the symbols are written in brackets, and here we just have the vowels, starting with the nice round O, working our way, 
kind of to that midway openness of the A vowel and then bringing it back to an E, um, a more closed forward vowel. So dark to light, basically. If we're working on getting a round, warm tone, we would start with the O or the O vowels and then bring them into the E, the A and the E in the vocalese. Um, the flip side of that would be if we are wanting a brighter sound in the tone, we would start with the E vowel and do this exercise, starting with E and working our way to the U vowel. Take some time to look at this musical example. And just looking at only the vowels, if we were to say these words, O oh music, sweet music, thy praises we sing, we would probably just, and many of our students would do this too, just chant those words like they would say those words in everyday spoken speech. However, if we put them in IPA, O oh music, sweet music, thy, there's a diphthong, diphthong, praises, praises, we will sing. Vowel modification. Um, IPA gives us an opportunity to talk with our students about where we want the vowel to go or what direction we'd like it to go, what to modify to in extreme ranges. Here's some examples of vowel modulation using the using IPA. Weston Noble did this, and he, this is sort of his claim to fame. Uh, he has many of them, but this is one of them. Um, here's an example, and you can take the time to try these by pausing the video, of course. But to modulate an E vowel, let's say the E vowels to spread, B will modulate some E into it. B again, B. Etc. Here's some more modulation. Another opportunity uh, that IPA affords us is to work through some of the syllabic stress issues that we end up with. For example, here are some words we sing all the time. The word ever. When we say it, we say ever. When we sing it, do we want to sing ever? We do we want to sing ever, ever, ever? Here's another one. Angel. Is it angel? Is it angel? So we can be very specific about how we want those de-stressed syllables to be sung. Here's another word. Is it delight? Is it delight? Is it delight. It gives us an awareness of every sound in every word. As you're introducing the consonants, I think it's, imp in in it's important to introduce the cognates together and practice moving back and forth between the unvoiced and the voiced. T, d, p, b, k, g, s, z, f, l. So we have an opportunity to introduce them in pairs and then occasionally exchange between the two of them. If, if, if a voice is not working, perhaps replace it with an unvoiced to get through it more quickly. I do that a lot with the Z and the S. It feels like the Z just takes too long. The S is a little quicker. So often, um, for example, Yezu versus Yesu. Su. IPA also helps us in dealing with consonants to remind our students that they must precede the beat. Uh, my exception to that would be the S. I think it needs to be right on the beat so we don't get the hissing on the S. But otherwise, it's important that it, all the consonants precede the beat. And they visually will see that when it's written in IPA. Um, helps them to understand that they need to be short, energized, and properly formed and gives us the opportunity to talk about on the voiced consonants that they must be on pitch and have the same pitch as the vowel. The properly formed consonant 
adds intelligibility to singing, of course, also adds precision to the sound, really aids in the intonation. Wherever that consonant is formed, the vowel will follow it. So it assists in our vowel uniformity and placement, unifies our entrances and releases, enhances our legato line, particularly when we are singing with voiced consonants, M's and N's, enhances proper vowel production, and adds vitality by keeping the vowel forward following a forward consonant. How to integrate IPA into the rehearsal? I would suggest we start with the vowels first, and you can teach these during the warm-ups, so use the symbols during the warm-ups. Introduce them in pairs. I like to op um, introduce the open and closed vowel at the same time. So, for example, the I vowel and the E vowel, introduce them at the same time. Visual aids are incredibly helpful. Patty DeWitt has a set of giant flashcards, classroom size flashcards, um, somewhat like the Solfege and Kerwin flashcards that are out there that are um, fabulous to just put up in, in the front of your room. Um, make sure that when you are sight reading on Solfege that those Solfege syllables have true sounds associated with them and it's not a bad idea to write those out in IPA as well. So instead of Do, Re, Mi, Do, Re, Mi, etc. As you're integrating IPA into the rehearsal, Keep it simple. You want to be comfortable with it yourself as a teacher. Again, teach it during the warm-ups, and maybe that's all you do for a while. Um, there's some other ideas. List song titles and put your announcements in IPA. It makes it lots of fun to have games where they can crack the code and try to translate it into English or have a phrase of the day or a word of the day. Add a kinesthetic component as well. So for each vowel that you are teaching them, show them a shape, whether it's drawing a circle around their mouth or pulling their lips forward for an O or an O, or giving them some sort of a shape. Um, it's a good idea as you're teaching those sounds that they look into a mirror and watch their lip shape, mouth formation uh, as they are forming these vowels or looking into their cell phones. My students are good at pulling those cell phones out. Um, using the wand exercise where you start on one side of the room, demonstrate the vowel as you are teaching them the IPA symbol, and then walk across the room with your hand, and as the wand of your hand passes them, they match that sound that you are making, or have them pair up in partners. Other integration, start with English equivalent sounds first, uh, maybe some English second language puzzles, games, and word solving. Those are very helpful. Uh, work it in games and puzzles both directions. Uh, maybe have some fun consonant warm-ups that are just using p or b or t or um, sh and play with rhythms that way, but write those sounds out in IPA for them. And remember, you do write the IPA in brackets. Um, the teaching sequence for learning repertoire in other languages. First learn the piece on a neutral syllable with the correct pitches and rhythms, then transcribe the text into IPA, and we'll talk more about this in class. Speak the text in speech rhythms, so you're just speaking the words as if you would say them in the rhythm you would speak them. Move it then, um, physicalize the shapes while you are speaking. Write in the IPA, and then wrap and I like to put the IPA um, above, I'm sorry, that is incorrect, below the text, and then I put the actual translation above. Um, wrap the song now, looking at the IPA in the rhythm, and I think it's a great idea to go ahead and add accompaniment when you do this, and then sing with the IPA, so putting the actual music with IPA. Then you can fine tune it uh, with online recordings or people who are native speakers. Remember, bracket the IPA, IPA above, translation below, or flip that around the other way. You do not use any capitals or punctuation marks in IPA. The colon stands for the elongated vowel or consonant sound. And be careful of words that look the same in different languages but sound different. Di versus D, in versus in, in and some great resources. 
We will talk a little bit about IPA now and IPA source. They're a quick way for getting your texts into IPA. 